It hasn't changed much. We'll be all right, Dan. I'm interested in what drew you to the topic of suicide. Obviously, it was the, the story of Bridge End popped up in the newspapers in the UK because it was this this cluster of suicides was obviously um, worth mentioning. But you saw the story. What made you decide to explore it further? Yeah, I read it in a Danish newspaper, which is yeah probably the same story as, as you heard here. At the time, it was. January 27, 2008, and at the time it was eight suicides. And I went there straight after, and within, I think, three weeks there were 17. So all of a sudden it went really fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know what was there, if there was a story, if there was a film or anything, or how that film was to be told. Mm -hmm. But it, I decided to go there and to find out. But my personal reason is that I have some of it in me, or I have experienced stuff that is that is close to what happened there, you can never compare, of course. But my dad was a drug addict, live alone with him. It's, you can call it one long suicide. Mm -hmm. my, uh, one of my best friends uh, in, in prime school, hung, uh, her, her dad, uh, hung himself in the garage. And unfortunately, in, in high school, I had a girlfriend who hung herself. So it, it's something that, w that has been close to me. And something, I don't think I, I don't pick a subject, actually. I think it picks me. Because, quite frankly, I would wish not to be a filmmaker if I could choose. I would rather be a carpenter or something else. Mm -hmm. Seriously. But uh, because of the background of finding your, my dad, I found him you know, dead. I thought he was dead many times because I was only like six, seven or so. Calling the ambulance, picking him up from the hospital, going back. I began to make stories at the time that would have a happy end. Mm -hmm. So already there I, I told stories to survive in a, in a, in a way. Mm -hmm. So I have to do these things. Why? That's the reason. Another vibrant young man who had the whole of his life ahead of him. Why are the youngsters so troubled in our community? You may or may not recognise uh, Hannah Murray from um, a small show which is bound to go, go far, uh, Game of Thrones, um, one to watch. Um, and also ha Hannah was in, in Glasgow um, about three years ago filming God Help the Girl if any of you saw that as well. But um, yeah, it was interesting chatting to Hannah who, who described the, sh the shoot as quite, as quite exhausting, quite emotionally difficult. Um, I think you can see the subject matter, obviously. Um, and you were saying it was the first film where you had a safe word. Yes, <laughs> it was the, on the only film to date where I've had a safe word. Um, for a bunch of stuff, for the, the, um, the strangling stuff, for a lot of the scenes Steve, where he was kind of like throwing me into cars or into rooms, um, because because uh, a lot of the, we wanted everything to feel very real and we wanted everything to be able to be um, spontaneous and things to happen in the moment and um, people were concerned if I was saying no or stop as part of the scene mm. and they were worried about my safety that they would have to cut. Uh, so we decided. I think it was banana. <laughs> um, was the, was the safe word, uh, but there was there was a kind of moment of stepping back and being like, oh, this is pretty, this is pretty heavy going. If we have to have mm -hmm. have to have a safe word, for these things. But you know, I think it, I think, I think that was what helped to give a kind of the kind of raw energy that these scenes needed. And then they were found in the forest. Mark was number twenty three. Are you the copper's daughter? Yeah. Who are these? Kids from the valley. Sarah. I'm Jamie. Sarah, come on, come in! <laughs> how, how, how involved did you get in, 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 the, in the scenes? Are you, are you quite good at switching off once the cameras stop, or did you find it quite a draining shoot, or did you have to take it? It was quite deep? draining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, we didn't. I mean, yeah, we sort of we had a giggle as well. I mean, that's terrible, but it's obviously not a happy, you know, comedy. We did have a lot, they're all over there, that lot, and they were fun. Um, so we did, do you know what I mean, you have to switch off for those things, because otherwise you go mad, so... Am I right in thinking you're the only one that uh, was putting on your Welsh accent, most of the others were... It's were... a very good Welsh accent, man. Yeah, thank yeah. you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they're all oh, Welsh. Yeah, they're all over there. Um, yeah, no, you, I don't think we... Um, no, I don't think it would have been... It, it's really intense, and I think at the end of each day, um, we were exhausted. I think 
Hannah mostly, obviously, but um, we were all very tired. And um, but I guess that's you know it was, it was a tough. It was always going to be a really tough story. And um, yeah, so it was always going to be. By the end of the shoot, we were exhausted. Why do you think they did it? Keep ourselves to ourselves around here. And no one leaves town. It's a terrific script and I, you know, I wanted to do it as, as soon as I read it. But yeah, I mean, you can't really play being a policeman. That's like a hat that you wear or whatever. It's, it's just a human being and it's just a guy with this daughter and getting embroiled in this situation. And I just thought the script was, um, I think it's a beautiful film. I think it's a very dark film, but it's absolutely beautiful. One of the best scripts I've ever read and I've been doing it for like 30 years. I just thought, yeah, Pei and his co-writers had given the actors lots of space for the characters to develop so that we could... We weren't just hammering the story, but somehow the story's been told through the actions rather than the words, and I, I just found that... Um, that's the top level, really, of script writing, so it's a, it's a great pleasure to play as an actor. And it was quite heavily improvised as well, am I right? Yeah, wasn't it? I wouldn't say it was heavily improvised. No. There, there, there was embellishments and things, but we, we pretty much stuck to... The, the, the script and, and Yepe was kind enough to sort of, if we wanted to go off off track a little bit, he would encourage that. So maybe mm. we did. I mean, it might be different for you guys, but I think we did explore some things in that in that vein. Let's get out of here. Jamie! And obviously, the film leaves it quite ambiguous. Uh, th there is no neat solution at the end of the film. Um, yep, it doesn't offer you one answer to why these friends, these teenagers, decided to to kill themselves in actually quite quick succession at, at, at points. Um, and I was asking if Yepa himself had, you know, during the course of your research and filming, were there any of it, you know. D there's, there's so many different theories. It could be copycatting, it could be collective grief, you know, this sort of growing sense of grief as your friends are dying. Um, it could be a thrill-seeking thing. You know, we see a lot of scenes where basically these are just kids that, like teenagers anywhere in the world, just want to feel something, whether it's an altered state, you know, getting dizzy before you have sex with someone or taking drugs or drinking, or do you have a hunch? What, or would that be too simplistic? That is the why, you know, the, the, the why we all search for, I mm. agree, uh, not agree, I, I think that you would mm -hmm. search for the why while, while watching the film. I'm not wiser than my film, everything I know is in there, and it's, the film is probably wiser than I am. There are questions being asked in the film, I'd say, yeah? and, uh, and I think there, there can be so many reasons, and in Bridgend I think it's definitely true, there, there must have been copycats, there must have been, you know, agreement of doing it you can it's not a pact we've discussed that i don't think that word is is too strong yeah mm -hmm. there was no manifest or, or things like that but but i've been with people who said if you do it i do it so you can say all things matters everything every theory is there but does that really give you the why i would rather say that the danish existentialist son kierkegaard that you probably know of he was totally in love with this fiancé of his, and he couldn't understand why. Because his problem was that he was a big writer, you probably know him or heard of him, and, and it was like, she was in the way, sort of. He was amused, but at the same time. So he wrote her a letter. He, he was standing on a bridge, and he took up this binocular. Back then it was just one, right? And he, uh, he looked for her, and he looked for the why. Why is it going on? And this is what he writes her. And he's trying to find the why, what, what's going on. And then he says, you have to understand that the, the outmost, you know, the glass at the furthest out mm -hmm. here is in fact a mirror. All those, that why you have to find within yourself.